All right, so I finally got a Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, I was a little busy last February when they came out and kind of put off buying one. And then when I had a little bit of time to play around with electronics, I uh, got sidetracked and, well, I started taking some of my old microcontroller projects and doing those with analog circuits. So setting up timers with low pass filters and op amps and tons of, having tons of fun with that. Uh, but at some point I remembered, oh yeah, I haven't tried out the Picos yet. And I remember when they came out, everything sounded so great about them. Uh, all the speed, all the numbers, and, uh, ready to use Python on them. So it'll be a great introduction to microcontroller devices for people getting into the hobby. Um, and so once I remembered that, went ahead and ordered it. And while waiting for Amazon to deliver it, I went ahead and started looking into it a little, downloaded the pinout diagrams, the data sheet, and then I noticed something in the data sheet that struck me as a little odd. Uh, reading through, kind of going over all the stuff, just kind of skimming it, uh, got down to the analog digital conversion. I was like, well, I'm definitely going to be doing a lot of that. Skim through there, like always in the data sheet. Sometimes I have to read it a couple times. A little, nothing really surprising there. Uh, normal voltage operating range. Uh, to cut down power supplies, you can just use the 3.3 volts going to the rail. It's like, yeah, that's what I planned on doing anyway. And started to move on and then noticed, oh, wait, there's a note in this section. So what's the note saying? Uh, so... It does the comparison and then this sentence, but the voltage on the, the voltage on the ADC analog inputs must not exceed the IOVDD. And I read that sentence and so it's like, so it has to be under the, it has to stay under that value. Well, that value was just a couple pages back in the data sheet, so it was kind of fresh on my mind. Here it is. Uh, IOVDD is decoupled with a capacitor. And, well, this thing's running really quick, so it would happen very quickly at the speeds on the Pico, but that just made me think, wait, won't that voltage be fluctuating slightly, not much, uh, but I think there's going to be some slight fluctuations on that voltage. And if I'm using, if I'm using that voltage in to power a potentiometer and then it fluctuates, I might exceed that up there when the potentiometer's pulling the full voltage or something. It was kind of my thought. So the part came in and I tested it and um, let's jump over to the circuit to see uh, to see what is going on there. And yeah, uh, well, I'll jump ahead a little here. Yes, once the part come in, that was one of the first things I tested. And sure enough, uh, when it, uh, the full power on the analog reads is acting a little funny. But uh, I saw this in the data sheet a couple days ago, so I had a couple days to think about it before testing the part and had a solution, an easy solution. So with the Pico probably being great for new people getting into it, I wanted to make sure there was an easy solution to that that problem somewhere for people to see. Uh, let's go over to the board and look at that. Okay, so let's take a look at this circuit and see what I was talking about there. If I bring in some power and I'll run the program. Uh, this is my normal circuit for testing things lately. It's a, an LED bar that's really just 10 independent LEDs with a bunch of colors on them. Uh, then I got an interrupt pin going to one of the LEDs, the normal flashing, that way I test the digital writes, 
digital reads, interrupts, uh, and the PWM and analog read. Uh, I've got just a regular potentiometer and that's going to the yellow light. So if I turn that all the way up here, oh, there's the thing I was talking about. Uh, it kind of flashes out up at full power. And then from testing it, there's also this. I'm not really sure where that came from yet. Uh, that's an easy software solution, but that's all the way down. That should be zero. If I hook the volt, I hook the voltmeter up and uh, with the potentiometer all the way down to zero, it's supplying zero volts and it's still showing some on the LED. It's very dim. It actually looks brighter on the camera than it does in person, but it's still there. But I'm not sure where that low end comes from. That there's an easy software solution for that. But that high end, that's the one that I noticed in the data sheet. And I uh, thought, that's kind of weird. So the solution that I came up with, what I thought would work, um, let me remove power, is to change the reference voltage. If the reference voltage has those same fluctuations, so plugging into the A ref pin, I'm just going to bring in power right from the breadboard. That way I know that it's the the power is coming from that IOVDD signal. So the reference voltage will have the same fluctuations as the uh, the power signal, which is causing that high end problem. So if I plug that back in and bring power back, run the program again, you see it's flashing. And now when I turn that all the way up, there's all the way up. So that takes care of the high end problem. Just bring your voltage, your power supply right back in. And it's the next pin over. Um, let me look at the image here. Uh, Chip pin 36 is the 3.3 volts out, and chip pin 35 is the ADC voltage reference, but they're right next to each other on the board. So to fix that high end on the analog read, just bring that over, and then the low end, there's a quick software solution for it. Um, while I'm shooting this scene, I'll go ahead and upload that software solution, so I'll uncomment some code and run that so bringing 3.3 volts into the analog reference fixes the high end and then the low end i just offset it by 500 in the in the software i printed out the measurements i was getting saw about what they were so i just offset it by 500 so now instead of go, only going to five down to 500 it goes all the way to zero but might have a better solution whenever I figure out why that's not going all the way down. I just wanted to share that, uh, that high end reference for, well, like I said in the intro, the Raspberry Pi Pico is going to be a great microcontroller to introduce people to it. And that's kind of an odd thing for new people to deal with. So I wanted to show the easy solution, tie 3.3 volts, into the analog reference. And then those same fluctuations are always occurring on a reference voltage so we don't get that acting up. Okay, just to finish up real quick here, here's that software solution I mentioned. Uh, so this variable twisted is reading the potentiometer. And I, well, originally printed out a bunch of values from that to see what was there. And once I saw how it fluctuated quite a bit down at that end too, so it could be a related issue. I don't know what's actually causing the low end one yet. But um, once I saw what the numbers were, I was like, well, it was around 500 out of do it. So if the value is bigger than 500, it just subtracts 500 for that offset. And if it's lower than 500, if the number is lower than 500, it just jumps down to zero. And that gets the potentiometer going all the way down to zero to write the duty cycle to that uh, yellow LED pin. And while looking at the code here, one other thing, since 
this was this video was kind of oriented towards people new to microcontrollers since the Pico is going to be a great great for bringing new people in there. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out to new people is make sure you run lines like this. Um, those theoretical numbers, those look great on marketing paperwork and stuff, but unless you plan on doing a whole lot of math, those theoretical numbers don't always tell you exactly what you're going to get. So just a quick thing here, I'll hit Alt 4 to uncomment it and run that. So what I'm doing is finding the period just by an offset of time. So uh, ticks in microseconds. So how many microseconds have passed since the last time I measured that, which I do at the very end of the loop down here. Um, and so figure out how long it took to get all the way around the loop. And then it's microseconds, so uh, the inverse of that times a million gives the frequency. And just print those out so that here, uh, clicking my interrupt here, I know you can't really see that while I'm doing the screencast, and turn in the potentiometer and see the actual frequency range that we're getting while this loop runs. Uh, so if you're getting into microcontrollers, make sure you check that. Because theoretical numbers are nice, but it's a lot more useful to know what speed you're actually getting. So it looks like we're getting somewhere between 3 and 5 hertz-ish range. Yeah, 3 to 5 hertz range. So that tells me a whole lot more about the, about the particular project I'm working on. Which in this case is just that test board. But mostly I just wanted to mention those that quick fix that I noticed in the data sheet over here. That... Uh, do not exceed IOVDD, which is a couple pages earlier in the data sheet, is decoupled with a capacitor, which means it's going to fluctuate slightly. So if we're, if our analog read is sending in the full value from that, that flu those fluctuations could could arise. So an easy solution I came up with was to run the IOVDD back into the analog reference. And that way the fluctuations are in the voltages that are being referenced as uh, instead of a nice regulated voltage. And then for the low end, I'm not sure what caused it, but it wasn't going all the way to zero, so you can just offset it by a little. Uh, I just wanted to share that quick, quick fix in case other people are hitting that same problem with the, uh, with the Pico boards.